Welcome back, folks, to July 2017 ICT Mentorship. This is the final lesson for July's content, Mega Trades in the Bond Market. All right, and when we go into the bond market, uh, we're going to be looking at, much like everything else we've looked at for this month's content, we're looking for seasonal tendencies. And seasonal tendencies are very specific with the bond market because it's a very repeating phenomenon that takes place every year and this is the seasonal tendency for the bonds and 30-year treasuries and obviously there's generally some measure of weakness starting in the beginning of the year and trades down into some seasonal low that takes place between the May and June months so sometime during May and or June, every year there's a seasonal low that forms generally, again, between the months of May and June. So this is the number one setup that I want you to be looking for every year. Now, before I state anything uh, further than I already have, just because we have a May-June seasonal tendency low that historically can be seen, doesn't mean every single year is going to create a seasonal low for the bond market in May and or in June. It just means that we have to be looking for this to potentially be there. So if there's going to be a decision based on whether you're going to be looking for a big move, in the bond market, whether shorting or going long, I think if you do the analysis and study over historical price data, you'll see that May, June, traditionally has a very high odds of making a low that is not a guarantee it's not a panacea be all end all idea it's not 100 percent so if you go enforcing it chances are you're going to lose money on it okay so i want you to focus primarily on the may june time period every single year for the formation of a low in the bond market now you can anticipate weakness in the beginning of the year down into this May June time period. That's one way you can look for a trading scenario, okay? Or you can simply sit on your hands and wait till May and June of every year and anticipate the technicals to get in line with the fundamentals, which shows this statistically proven. There's more chance of a seasonal low forming in the spring, early summer. In the bond market than any other time of the year. Later in the year, there's the September, October, November rallies that take place. You can see there's two significant intermediate term lows that form, and they're generally short term in nature. So uh, you can be a short term swing trader or uh, just a short term trader and anticipate bullishness in those time periods. But the primary one I want you to focus on for mega trades is the May June time period for bonds. Okay, we've mentioned it multiple times throughout this mentorship, but the interest rate SMT is going to be that little silver bullet you're looking for for qualifying and confirming that the mega trade itself is actually unfolding. Now, the Treasury bond market is routinely a trending market historically. You can see that over long periods of time, bonds typically will move in a trending environment. Now, it doesn't mean they won't go into consolidations. It just generally means that as a characteristic for this asset, it's historically and traditionally a good trending market. It tends to stay in a long-term trend for a while. Now, when seeking mega trades in bonds, it's crucial to refer to the five-year, 10-year notes, comparably with the 30-year bond market. Now, this application of relative strength analysis will aid in timing where the smart money actually steps in and buys the bond market in large magnitude. It's one thing to anticipate the seasonal low in May and June, and that's enough to give you a statistical edge. Edge is not 100%. It just means that you have a statistical edge that more times than not, there's usually a seasonal low forming between May and June over the calendar year for the bond market. Now, does it mean that it goes up the rest of the year? No, it just means that you have a potential to see a significant rally to occur from the May-June lows. 
that can't be qualified until you see an SMT divergence across the five year, the 10 year, and the 30 year bond market. So, what does it look like? Well, when you look for a mega trade, okay, I'm going to simplify it in similar fashion you've seen so far for the previous three lessons. The first thing you're looking for is a seasonal tendency that forms in late spring, early summer, which is the May, June bond low. The next stage is you're going to be looking for identifying institutional order flow, and you're going to be waiting for a higher time frame institutional PDA. Right? Now, what you're waiting for is you're going to anticipate bullishness on the seasonal tendency between May and June. You're going to identify institutional order flow. You're going to be waiting for signs to indicate that on a higher time frame that the market should be looking for higher prices. And when the market goes into a discount market, now you have a stage that's properly set. Now you're going to be performing a daily scan for the interest rate SMT divergence between the 5-year, the 10-year, and the 30-year. Once you get an entry based on institutional order flow and entry techniques that we've covered in other parts of this mentorship and that are going to be specifically spelled out in your August content PDF top-down analysis, you'll be anticipating a move or duration that takes us into the fall months. So the fall highs that's generally what you're aiming for. It does not mean that the bond market is going to rally that long. It just may rally a month or two. But generally, we're waiting for the September, October time period to anticipate some measure of intermediate term highs to form. After that, short term trading begins from a characteristic standpoint for the bonds. And each year, you want to be doing this as a routine. But the main thing is, is you do not want to overtrade the bonds. You want to be looking for this May-June time period to begin the trend over the next several calendar months. If you do this, if you sit on your hands and you wait for this to come to fruition, you, number one, will develop discipline. You'll have a clear objective approach about how to trade the bonds. And it's as you'll see, very consistent with giving a long-term swing traders model, a long-term position traders model, and if you trade in a direction that this method gives you, you can also do day trades and one-shot, one-kills in the direction as well. So it gives you the basis for trading the bond market entirely from all aspects of short-term day trading, scalping, you know, swing trading and position trading. You can't ask for anything more. This is the reason why I saved it for last. Bonds are a pet market of mine that I have a, a very close um, love for, basically. I, like I said, if I was forced out of Forex, if Forex just became untradable, I'd go right back to the bond market, and I'm confident that I would do very well with it. Do I want to go back to the bond market? No, I don't, because I'm passionate about the foreign exchange market because I think it's loaded with manipulation, so therefore I know what those manipulations are. If it becomes impossible for me, I will have no problem leaving the asset class of the foreign exchange and going back to trading commodity futures in the bond market and have absolutely zero fear of whether or not I'm going to be able to find consistency. By itself, that's a huge uh, vote of confidence in myself as a trader. You may not have that, but you will develop it over time, especially if you're looking for big moves like this. Because if we get these big moves that start between May and June, and they go for long durations over several months, what that will do is it will fuel the other markets to allow them to go into trending environments as well. If it does not come to fruition in May and June, it doesn't create a low, that will also spell other things that we'll talk about in August PDF notes and content that tells you what you should be doing. But primarily, May-June time period, we want to be anticipating a low forming in the bond market and therefore a rally in the coming months after those May-June lows form.
Okay, we're looking at an example here of the three specific bond and notes that you have to be looking at. The top is the five-year treasury note. The middle chart is the 10-year treasury note. And the lowest is the 30-year treasury bond market. So when we're looking at price, okay, I want you to learn to train your eye to anticipate specific turning points. Now, there's two turning points on here that I really want to draw your attention to. The first is the most furthest to the left of the chart. There's a swing high, a retracement, and then another swing high forming. This is seen on all three of the charts. The uppermost five-year treasury has a higher swing high or high forming. And then the 10-year has a lower high forming. And then obviously the 30-year has a lower high forming as well. This confirms that down move trading down into the low that's seen on all three charts. That low is what I want to draw your attention to. So while we see the divergence at the highs, which led to that deep retracement, how can we see that low and why did it have such a response off that low? Well, we're going to take a look at that in greater detail, but right now we're focusing primarily right there. So now looking at the five year at the top, you can see that the five year made a lower low. The 10 year in the middle made a higher low and the 30 year made almost equal lows. So there's a divergence or interest rate SMT divergence and it's this divergence right here. The 10 year failed to make a lower low while the other two made either an attempt to go lower or equal low. The three bond markets or treasury markets here they have to move in concert with one another. If they diverge and it just takes one, that is your early warning sign. Because the smart money does such a large volume of trading, when they step in and start buying, they're going to spread their risk over the short term, the immediate term, and the long term. Because of that and because of their sheer volume and their order placement, there's going to be a crack in the correlation amongst the short term, the intermediate term, and the long term yields. Short-term yield is the five-year, intermediate-term yield is the 10-year, and the 30-year is the long-term yield. We're trading the 30-year bond or the 30-year yield, but we're using the short-term and intermediate-term and the long-term yield in comparison to see when that smart money elephant presses its foot down in the mud. This is what it looks like. So we're going to use this example here, working from the lower time frame out to a higher time frame, to identify what this smart money footprint looks like and how you can use it to frame mega trades. Okay, folks, this is the five year treasury note. And I want you to see that lower low here. Okay. And we're going to look at the 10 year. And you see that divergence right there. And we're going to look at the 30 year treasury. You can see that's relatively equal. Okay, so the five year went lower, the 10 year diverged, and the 30 year was basically unchanged or equal low. That in itself is SMT. This is the crack in the correlation that would be normally expected in the bond and treasury markets. So the five year, 10 year treasury notes and 30 year bond market, they should be moving in tandem. But because they're not moving in tandem here, this draws special attention to what may be a smart money accumulation pattern. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go out to a daily time period. Okay, and this is actually just looking at the month of June of 2008. And we're going to look at 2008, 2009, all the way up to 2017. Okay, here's the five year of the 2008 September contract. As you can see, the May-June time period, we're looking for a seasonal low to form, and the low forms in June. Now, I zoomed in on an intraday chart on the 5-year, 10-year, and 30-year right at this low. That's what we were just looking at in the previous charts. This is the 10-year, 
of the same time period. And there's the 30-year Treasury bond. Again, the May-June time period creating a seasonal low. The S&T divergence that occurs down here, we could be a buyer around 112 and a half. Let's just call it 112 and a half. If that's the case, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve thousand dollars per contract of a move from the June seasonal tenancy, just getting into September at the contract expiration. This is a tender delivery contract. Now we're going to look at the December contracts throughout the rest of the remainder of this presentation, but I want to show you that in 2008, the seasonal tenancy was in fact there, okay? And we also saw that the September influence that was expected for short-term trading also saw a rally as well. We also see in the early portion of the year, there's a decline that took place, trading down into that May-June time period for the seasonal tenancy to kick in. Now, I don't know about you, but $12,000 per contract is a rather significant return in a short order of time. One month, two months, three months of time to make $12,000 per contract. That is a mega trade. That's what it looks like in the bond market. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the delivery contract month of December 2008, and then we'll start working out from 2008 to 2017. Okay, now we can see the delivery contract of 2008 the December contract. This is the five-year treasury. As you can see, we have basically equal or slightly higher low here while in consolidation. And we're in that September, October time period when seasonally we expect to see rallies occur as well. And we're gonna look at the 10-year. You see now here the 10-year makes a lower low. See that? So we have a lower low formed in the 10-year comparatively with the five-year that was unable to make a lower low. At the same time, the 30-year Treasury bond was making a lower low. So we have that September-October time period going into November, and we have a, a <laughs> very impressive rally. Again, we're going to assume that we could have taken a long at 114. This is all hindsight, and this is completely hypothetical. But in the grand scheme of things, let's say it's 114, there was an entry. That's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28 thousand dollars per contract going long on the 30-year treasury bond with a seasonal tenancy and expecting higher prices and using the index SMT divergence. Huge, huge, huge moves in the bond market here. What I want you to believe is that, yes, these moves are possible, but not all of them will be this extrapolated. This is a huge, huge move. But the market had moved down into a discount array down here as well. Price moved away and started breaking all the premium arrays and started rallying for a higher time frame objective. Now, if we look at a higher time frame chart, and we'll do that now, here we can see that 114 level was inside of a bullish order block, and it also came down and took out short-term sell stops. And this is a weekly chart prior to that extrapolated move on the upside. Here's the range, the high and the low. We had moved down into a discount array, ran stops, Bullish order block, boom, explosive price rally. 2009 set up here, May, June time period. You'd see the five year going into June. Okay, you see a higher low forming here. So this old low here did not get broken with this low. And on the 10 year, right away, we can see it made a lower low right there. And the bond market made a lower low in our May-June time period. We could be a buyer in the bond market. Again, we're going to be using that 14 level, that 114 level as a potential entry. 
return the order block here, last down close. Uh, the high on this is 113.21, and this low here came in at 113.22. So we're going to just say that it's 114 that we got in at, use a nice big round figure. 114 and price rallies up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and a half or eight and a half thousand dollars per contract. Now this is the September contract. We're going to look at how much it rolled if we moved into the December contract out of this out of the September contract and rolled into the December delivery to get more of a move. So we're going to reference basically the beginning of September in the contract price movement in December's contract, which we'll see now. Okay, and that's September here, and price rallies another, we'll say uh, one, two, three thousand and a half, three another, three thousand dollars more of a price move by rolling from September's contract into December. You know, taking the greatest advantage of the seasonal tendency. Also notice that we have that September rally, October, November time period where we get that short-term traders idea for buying the bonds in relationship to our seasonal tendency. Buying down in here and getting out here, not even getting the highest high and the lowest low. About $3,000, $4,000 worth of uh, price action here and here as well. So from assuming got in at uh, 18 and a half each time, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Nice moves. Each, each one of these wouldn't be considered a mega trade, but the again, May, June time period when we would look to go long, that would be a mega trade. So the movement all the way up to 123.16 based on the origin of the June low. And again, the five year failed to make a lower low. 10 year and 30 year did go lower in June. And the seasonal, seasonal tendency unfolded beautifully in 2009. Okay, here we have the five year treasury note on September 2010. In our May-June time period, we can see that the market had already started a trending environment. And in the 10-year, we can see the same thing occurring here, May-June time period. We're going to take a look at that in greater detail on intraday. And on the 30-year Treasury note, or Treasury bond rather, again, market's already in a trending environment. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at, during this consolidation in here, okay, we're going to look about mid May to mid-June on an intraday basis, and we'll see the S&T divergence that was there. Okay, here we're looking at the five-year, and I zoomed in from May 12th, 2010 to June 15th, 2010, and you can do this by having the settings like this. You go to line, intraday, show about a month's worth of data, two-hour chart, and put the data field in which you want to scan through. Okay, and this is what you come up with by plotting that. And you can see that we have May going into June. We have this slightly higher low here. And in the 10-year, we have that lower low. So right away, we have divergence, five years failing to go lower like the 10-year. And on the 30-year, we have that lower low as well. Okay. In a candlestick chart, you can see how that worked out in terms of institutional order flow. We have a fair value gap in here. Price trades down into it. There's your discount array. It's in a discount market. High to low. Why not down here, Michael? You could have used it. You could have used that, that range. But we had a dynamic price movement here and diamond, dynamic price movement here as well. We have just recently taken this one out, so what's the next downside discount array? It's going to be this one. 
and this is where the divergence occurred. So we're blending the two, lower low in the 30 year, but it goes to a discount array. At the same time, the 10 year makes that lower low, but the five year doesn't. So that's where your 2010 mega trade entry pattern formed. Let's go back out to the bond market and we'll go to the daily time frame. Okay, here's the daily time frame for the September 2010 delivery contract. And we're going to say at 122.5 was our entry with the bond or interest rate SMT divergence. So at 122.5, right in here, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. $14,000 per contract. And that's just the movement up into prior to September. Um, again, we look for September, October time period to give us our seasonal high or before the market starts going into a swing traders model or short term trading. And let's look at the December contract of 2010. Price dips down and it makes one more attempt to rally doesn't really trade higher than the previous high does it but look what happens we have the october high and the market eventually trades lower so did the seasonal tendency and mega trade unfold there absolutely it did that's a lot of money for one setup that you wait for every year and try to milk it so now we're going to take a look at 2011. okay here is the September contract for five-year treasury notes, 2011. And we're already in the intraday charts, and we're going to zoom out from this point. I just want to see how the seasonal tendency can be sometimes a little bit late. And I also want to show you an opportunity to use relative strength a little bit differently. That way you can see that it's not just looking at a short-term low against another short-term low. You can sometimes have to trade through a short-term low to get the measurement and I'll show you what that means right now we have this low here this low here and another lower low you see that so we have a low a lower low and a lower low so we have low lower low lower low prior to the rally and that's on the five year now if we look at the 10 year we have that same similar thing here we have a low, a lower low, and a lower low. Okay, so again, we have that same dynamic. Five-year and 10-year are in agreement. Now let's take a look at the 30-year. We have a low, a lower low, a lower low again. No, we have a higher low. So by using three points of reference makes a swing low. We have a swing low here, here, here lowest in the middle higher low to the left higher low to the right comparatively we see that not occurring in the 10 year and we don't see it occurring in the five year okay so this is a footprint it's the same smart money accumulation pattern by nature or by description the characteristic of seeing when smart money places their foot in the marketplace but it's a different interpretation but it's the same result so while we can look at these two lows here and here that is enough to give the divergence okay so between the five year making that lower low here the 10 year making that lower low here the higher low in the 30 year it starts off by seeing and anticipating that low that lower low and as the market starts dropping down we're going to be watching to see if the 10 year and the 5 year and the 30 year do it we don't see it there okay so the divergence occurred just a little bit late in terms of seasonal timing but the anticipation is still there and we start scanning for it each day okay now we're going to go out in all these time frames back out to a daily and we can see that the, the signal itself formed on July yeah July 8th 2000 
11. Okay, so we can see. Okay, now we can see the 30 year Treasury bond. And this is the 8th of July in 2011. Near the low end of, of this range, I'm sorry, this low here, stops have been taken. The range is from here to here. We're still in a discount. Price trades down into order block here, rallies away. We're going to assume that for hindsight and hypothetical speaking, um, we got in at 124. So that would be 2. 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19,000 dollars per contract of price movement using the September delivery. And we're going to go to, and then let me show you really quick what the 10 year looked like at the same time. Okay, nothing standing out obvious there. And there as well for the five year. But for the December contract, if we roll over when September expires, the movement from September on, we can see price moves just a little bit and then creates a short term decline into a September October retracement, then another rally up going into November. So the market goes into a short term traders. Uh, characteristic again as outlined at the beginning of this teaching. So the September October time period, we're still looking for that seasonal high each year. 2011 does it again. So now we're going to take a look at the 2012. Okay, now we have 2012's opportunity here, May June time period, and it's the five year Treasury note. We have a lower low here on the five year going into to June from May to June the 10 year we don't see that we see a higher low in the bond market we see a higher low as well so by itself we won't need to go down to a lower time frame we'll just say we went in at 148 so 148 to 149 is 1,000 2,000 3,000 4,000 5,000 so buying in here up to here we have about $5,000 worth of price movement, but notice what happens. Price doesn't do very much of a move beyond this premium array. So we traded above an old high, but then it failed. The turtle souped and it went lower. So it didn't pay out a whole lot. Even if we go to the December contract, you can see that in 2012, the bond market did not give us a nice extrapolated move. It only moved about $5,000 per contract and then went lower. Okay, and then went into a range bound consolidation. Still giving us an opportunity to rally in September and October to catch those short term swings, but we didn't see that continuation of that theme of May, June's low into higher September, October time period. It was actually a lower September, October time period, but still each year we're seeing that September, October time period for a rally seasonally and they're trading off of discount arrays but this month or this year rather 2012 we don't see the evidence or the painting out of that mega trade now this is the first one in the, the years that we've started looking at but so far it's been pretty consistent and so now we're going to take a look at 2013 okay now we're looking at the 2013 this is a five-year treasury note and we're looking at uh, May, June time period. So we have a low here. Maybe this seasonal tendency is coming in a little late. We have a lower low going into July, just like the previous year. We saw a little bit of lateness coming in. The 10 year, we see that same lower low form. And in the 30 year, the same lower low. Bonds are in a downtrend. And guess what? There's absolutely zero mega trade forming for this for our seasonal tendency. So we have back-to-back -back years, 2012, 2013, not providing our bullish seasonal tendency for a rally. And we don't see that seasonal pop from May, June, leading into October, September, October time period as a seasonal high. Let's take a look at what the September contract looked like 
here in contrast to the December contract. You can see that the September and October time period did create our buying opportunities that we look for, but the mega trade was just, just simply not there. We have about uh, $9,000, $8,000 worth of a price move on this, but we're just going to say that 2012 and 2013 were dud years. So now we're going to take a look at 2014. Okay, here we have 2014. This is the five-year Treasury note. And here's our May-June time period. Okay, and we have a low, a lower low. Then we have the market creating a little bit of a rally up. And in the 10-year, we can see that we made relatively equal lows in the middle of June. Let's go back to the five-year. You can see that we went lower here, failed to go lower, in the 10 year, in the 30 year, failed to go lower. So we have a divergence there. But notice we have a nice wick down taking out these equal lows in July. They did a stop run. Now I mentioned before how bonds typically are not plagued with a great deal of manipulation. But this is one of those instances where it does occur, but it creates another SMT divergence between the interest rates. So the 30 year makes a lower low here. In July does not make that lower low in July in the 10 year and doesn't create that lower low in till late end of July here but all we need is a signal for the bond market the 30-year Treasury and that's in here so we can see this as a run on sell stops and we'll say that we were able to get in at 135 So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, almost seven, seven thousand dollars worth of a price move, and that's using the September contract. And December contract sees it go even further. Okay, we have a nice run up in October. So we have our September and then our October, November rally as well. So again, we had two back-to-back -back dead years, and then we came right back in with a barn burner year of big, big movement in the bond market. So now we're going to take a look at the 2015 year. Okay, we have 2015. This is the five-year Treasury note, our May-June time period in here. Okay, and we have a low, a higher low, and a higher low in here. But look closely. We have a higher low here towards the end of June. On the 10 year, we have that lower low. So right away we have S&T divergence and we have a lower low and it creates a lower low for the month in the 30 year. Okay, and price starts to rally from there. We're gonna say that we were able to get in at 149. Again, we're not trying to pick the best price of entry. So 149 to 150. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars again of a price rally, but it creates a short term high in August, trading back to a premium array bearish order block, then falls off rather aggressively. Okay, so we, we rebalance all price delivery on the downside here with buy side delivery here. Let's see what the December contract shown if there was any more continuation, but right away, it's already a mega trade by itself in terms of price magnitude, how much it moved. And for the December contract, it created again the September, October, November rallies, but nothing in terms of extrapolation on the upside. So again, we have another year where the mega trade unfolds for the bond market. So now we're going to take a look at 2016. Okay, you can see the 2016 five-year Treasury note for the September delivery contract. Okay, our May-June time period here, we have a lower low and a series of lower lows in here going into June. We have a higher low at the end of May going into June, and we have the failure to make a lower low even in this series of lows. So right away we have S&T divergence, and we have a higher low comparably with the bond market. So we're going to say we had a 163 entry, again, not picking the lowest or best scenario, 163, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 thousand dollars. Again, every full handle is one thousand dollars per contract, and that in itself is a nice mega trade, big, huge extrapolated move. And but again, it dies out in July and goes lower. Let's see what happens in December. Was there any follow through in December 2016's contract? So we've made the high in July and then went lower and nothing shown as a rally for September, October, November time period. In fact, it was in bear country. So it still panned out for 2016 in terms of mega trade payout, but this doesn't have that September, October length of time for a higher high. Now we're going to take a look at 2017. Okay, we're in 2017. We're looking at the five-year treasury note, and this is September delivery contract. And I want you to take a look at the this low here in April. Okay, I know we're looking at May, June time period, but I want you to look at this here. This low and a higher low formed in May, and then it rallies up. That's the five five-year treasury note. We have a higher low formed here on the 10 year. But look what we have here. We have a lower low on the bond market. So the 30 year treasury note or uh, treasury bond has a lower low. So the SMT divergence is there. The five year and 10 year showed a willingness to not go lower during our seasonal time period, May, June time period. So we're going to say we got in at 150. So 150 is our entry. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5, 6, 7,000 dollars worth of price movement. And we have yet to see, obviously, the rest of this year, but 7,000 dollars payout. I wouldn't exactly call that a mega trade, but nothing wrong with it. And seasonal tendency is still implying uh, you know, further prices. We'll see if the bond market has a willingness to go higher. And trade back through the 157 level and we'll see the rest of the year if it pans out i don't believe i have a crystal ball to tell you if it's going to do it here or not but it's one to watch for the rest of the year i'll let you determine whether seven thousand dollars per contract is a mega trade personally i don't believe it is i'd like to see especially for the bomber i like to see about ten thousand dollars or more um, to, to basically qualify as a mega trade um, is it a matter of importance? You know, if you make seven thousand dollars versus fourteen thousand dollars, obviously everyone would raise their hand and say, "I want the fourteen thousand uh, dollars." But I'd like to see ten thousand dollars or more for the annual move that takes place in the bond market to really qualify as a mega trade. Anything less than that is just a really good trade, but not a mega trade. So hopefully you found this teaching insightful. It gives you the the basis for. Uh, finding the big move that takes place in the bond market. Don't stop here. Go back and look at earlier years than this. Uh, and again, all you're doing is just changing all the information down here, okay, and using the intraday chart, showing one month's worth of data, and just pick a time um, between when the low makes its formation, and you'll see the divergence is always there. It's never missing, and you can clearly see the footprint that Smart Money Lease when they go in and buying aggressively and the magnitude of their orders causes that divergence to occur across the yields of five year, 10 year and 30 year. And until next time, I wish you good luck and good trading.